It was a dark and stormy night. A lone engineer was reverse engineering a circuit at their bench, but they were distracted by the feeling they were being watched. Perhaps an animal had come in to shelter from the storm. They glanced over to see what it was, and the last thing they saw was the glowing eyes of a giant tarantula. So first up, a bit of a safety warning. Smoke machines are quite dangerous uh, for a couple of reasons. One which is they have a big heater in them, um, so the risk of burning from that. They also have mains voltages inside the cases. And in my case, the manual mentions that there's mains voltages in the remote control pendant, uh, which is the bit I'm going to be replacing with my circuitry. So I need to factor that into the design, make sure it's nice and safe. Uh, make sure it uh, doesn't cause any sparking or uh, radio interference. But the main thing is before opening up the, uh, the case, I need to make sure it's turned off, I um, need to make sure it's cooled down, and I need to make sure that any components that could be storing electricity, such as capacitors or inductors, have discharged any electricity. So I'm going to give it a few minutes and then let's uh, crack it open and see what's inside. So the first thing to do is to remove the little pipe that uh, sucks up the uh, smoke juice. And then we've got a number of screws to remove. In this particular model, we've got two on the top, we've got two on the front and two on the back. So once we've taken all the screws out, uh, we can take the lid off carefully. Need to ease the tube through. Appears to be taking the smoke canister with it, so we'll just let that Set to one side. So now we've got the lid off, we can take a look at the components. We've got the on off switch here at the top, which is interesting because it's got actually all three cables connected. So maybe it does some kind of discharge when you turn things off. We've got the remote control coming in here with these little extra connectors. We've got the main power comes in at the bottom here and earths to the case. This little box here is a motor, it says micro pump on it. So that's going to be sending the smoke up there into this unit. And I'm guessing this is a heater and some kind of sensor. I think my guess would be this bit's the heater uh, and this bit's the sensor. So here's a close up of that component on the top. So 240 volts, 10 amps. So it's got two spade connectors and appears to sit on top of the big block part of the smoke machine. I think this is going to be some kind of thermal switch. Going to look up that part number and see what we've got. This is the reverse engineered circuit. When the smoke machine's turned on, the heater's activated. And at this point, the pump is shorted out so it can't run. But when the bimetallic switch opens up, that uh, effectively enables the circuit on the left. So we'll see the LEDs will light up and the button will be enabled. And then the user can press that button and the pump gets activated. Do you like winning free stuff? Are you an electronics hobbyist? Do you like building cool projects and winning prizes for what you build? The Element 14 community presents Project 14, the member-driven destination where you decide on the challenge. You enter projects to win monthly prizes and you vote on the winners. What are you waiting for? Join the Element 14 community so you too can enter one of our contests or submit an idea for your own. Join now! So to replace that remote with our own control circuit, what we need to do is find a switch and something to replace those LEDs. For the switch, we're gonna use a simple relay that can be controlled by a transistor, which in turn can be driven from our microcontroller. And then for the diodes, we're gonna have, well, one LED, um, but the second LED, what we'll do is we'll make that part of an opto isolator. And that means that we'll get a signal from the transistor side of the opto isolator, which we can then monitor with our microcontroller. So as mentioned in the intro, I wanted to add some extra protection circuitry to our design. I've got a metal oxide varistor, which will stop the relay contacts from arcing or high voltages hitting the circuit. I've also got a RC snubber, so it's a big value capacitor and a small value resistor, um, and that will stop interference on radios and mobile phones um, when that relay clicks on and off. And then on the input side, 
two lots of protection as well. There's the TVS diodes, so they fail over when the voltage goes over a certain level and that stops the high voltages hitting the opto isolator. And there's also a series fuse, a PTC fuse, um, and that will again disable the opto isolator if the current flowing through that part of the circuit is too high. So that gives us uh, plenty of protection on both sides of the circuit. So up here in the top left, we can see we've got a little diode. That's a Schottky diode. So it's a lower voltage drop than a regular diode. Um, that uh, protects the battery from when we plug in the Pi Pico uh, for debugging of, uh, on the USB. So the last part of the circuit is there to support the motion sensor. The motion sensor runs at five volts and the Pi Pico runs at 3.3 volts. So what we've got is a little boost regulator there, runs off the 3.3 volt input and provides five volt output. And then coming back the other way, we've got the output signal from the motion sensor and a simple resistive divider, which will drop that five volt signal down to 3.3 volt signal suitable for the Pi Pico. To keep all the mains on one board, I broke out the LED control to a second board. So we've got a second Pi Pico, we've got a Darlington driver array, and that can sync lots of current uh, from our bundles of LEDs. And then the same uh, sensor and level shifter circuitry as the first board. So to test that opto isolating uh, pulse detection circuit, we can use something like a signal generator or perhaps a low voltage AC adapter. You quite often get those on some cheaper devices that don't need rectified DC. And that allows us to do fault finding on the circuit um, and potentially debugging the software as well without having to have mains voltages flowing through the board. Go for the project is written in MicroPython. We have a interrupt handler that looks for pulses coming in from the optocoupler and it counts them. And a timer then looks to see if that count is over a certain value. And if we've had a certain number of pulses within our time period, then we're going to assume that there's a, sig a signal there and the smoke machine is ready. We've got a second interrupt handler that's connected to the motion sensor. So when that's triggered, we know that there's some motion. The combination of the smoke machine and the motion then triggers the effect, which is to turn on the output, wait a, a period of time, and then turn the output back off again so that we get a pulse of smoke coming out for the effects. Bit strange going on here at the workshop. Got like these massive cobwebs uh, everywhere. What's that above the door? So I've had a lot of fun reverse engineering that smoke machine and putting it into a Halloween project. If you have any Halloween projects or challenges with reverse engineering, why not let us know on the Element 14 community?